So we're going to start. We have an agenda, and I have some security precautions in place, as you can see. No videos, but uh, that's okay. We can hear each other, and we're going to start the meeting with. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm here. I'm my daughter's doing taxes while I'm sitting here with you. <laughs> okay, and what's your name again? Jen Cordes, 60D, uh, 60 Swamp Road. Jen Cordes, okay. Hey Jen, could we ask if um if you would please um, mute unless you were unless you're actively speaking, please. Okay. Yep. Just for yeah. background, a lot of background noise. That's all. It's just what it, yeah. Or Thank you, you know, keep it quiet. And Sandy, the same for you. What's your last name, Sandy? We'll get that. Mark, you know the last name now? Okay, no. Sandra, what's your last yes. name? What's your last Switz name? Switzer. S-W-I-T-Z-E-R? E-R, yes. Got that, Mike? Okay. And this meeting is being recorded just in case. So I'm gonna share the, um, the uh, where's the share screen? Okay. The, um, there we go. Hey, Mark. Oh, Mike, sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, they're not. Oh, let me go, go change that. Yeah, let me see if I can change. Let me see. Yeah, let me see if I can change it over here, too. Okay, hold on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Readings, uh, readings um, settings. Waiting room. Uh, we the passcode, a new passcode. Nice video. Um, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For, okay. Uh, uh, Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I changed some of the settings. Um, I'm not sure it's going to work here tonight, but it, um, mine's on now. Yours is on. Yeah, you can hear me, right? Yeah. I'm not going to turn it off, just in case. Yeah, don't turn it off. Mark? Um, could I ask for, um, um, Sandra, if you can hear, if you can uh, use your microphone, can you tell me a spelling of your last name, please? Or did you get it, Fran? Yeah, S-W-I-T-Z-E-R. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, Mark, you're okay also? Yeah, I'm just gonna leave myself unmuted. And if I get background noise, I'll try to adjust it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, don't worry. I can't unmute myself, but still. Oh, you're muting yourself. Okay. That's what I was. I was muting myself, so try to cut down on the background noise. But yeah, it's good. Yeah. So, Chris, uh, you know, if you want to say something, just 
raise your hand or something. Anyway, so uh, sharing. Where the heck is sharing here? So you know, I don't think Chris can raise his hand because he's just on a stack, uh, um, a data, uh, um, a set picture. He's not on a video. There he goes. No, I, I, I can, I can raise okay, my hand. Yeah, he's, he's able, able to raise his hand. Before. Thanks, Chris. Ah. Thank you. But the screen sharing is not a visible, visible. I may have to start this thing again. I have, um, I have my copy. Um, I think it's just for the three of us. Um, yeah. We're talking about for the uh, Minute. last months, minutes. Yeah. We'll um, take that to the end and we take, take care of everything else first. Yeah. One and, and, yeah, sorry. Um, so on today's agenda, we'll start with the first item, which is um, the school's and town updates. And I'm sorry for uh, tightening this, this meeting down, but um, so, um, so, if I can, I'll share what um, what I have as a public health nurse, Fran. Yeah, um, yeah, go ahead. It's yeah. brief. It's a um, it's you know um, positive to see what we're seeing broadly um, is a um, slow decrease um, in the number of cases and the certainly the severity of cases. Um, I think um, there's a, a great article in the New York Times uh, tonight that, or today earlier, that would be great reading. Um, but, you know, there was a, um, a tendency back in 1918 and all the other um, mm -hmm. pandemics that we've had that two to three waves and everybody's burnt out, not just the general public, but public health as well. And the most deadly turned out to be the fourth wave, which was everybody was too tired to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was in 2020, uh, excuse me, 1920. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, it's same thing happened in, in, in the other pandemics, but um, public health um, takes a backseat to the, um, the mm -hmm. exhaustion of the general public. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and public health as well, which is unfortunate. But anyway, um, I don't mean to be pessimistic. We've got reasons to be optimistic. Um, uh, we're, while we're looking at 70%, vaccination rate now, right now, we still have a um, woeful um, number of uh, back, uh, boosted. Uh, we're still at 40% boosted, which is a very low number um, for where we should be and need to be um, to fight off. Is, this, uh, is that for Foothills? Sorry. No, no, no that's, um, that's for nationwide. Oh, yeah. No, no, yeah. that's of course. How about locally? I don't, I don't have localized numbers for, for that exactly, but it's just, yeah. um, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good article and I would recommend it. But um, other than that, um, um, I don't have a scheduled Vax Plus coming up that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there should be one um, uh, for the second round for that South Deerfield one that we did um, yeah. uh, at the end of uh, uh, yeah. or, or where was that? No, that was in the middle of January. Mm -hmm. um, so that was scheduled. I think it's in the, the meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was. Yeah, I think that the twenty fifth is what Alex said. The next Vax bus is going to be. Okay. Yeah. So that's and, two and plus uh, additional shots, and everybody got that email about the um, the one that's coming up um, at Hampshire Regional. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. That's that one. Um, so numbers in for Waitley, are they? Um, numbers in Waitley continue. I, um, I forget what I told you yesterday. I only have three addition uh, for today, um, three additional cases um, that were added on. Um, so uh, I have a break in front okay. of me. I was interested in, and went back a month um, to January 1st out of curiosity. And there's been, uh, we had 50 total cases from January 1 to today. Yeah. yeah. Big, big numbers for <laughs> Wheatley, but it's a whole month and uh, yeah. Anyway, so, okay. Um, yeah, let me just report on the Binax test. We did Please. get them, we distributed them to uh, the, as, as you guys know, to the police department and they are administering those under our uh, CLIA waiver. And um, I don't think they've gotten very many customers. These are for employee, town employees only. And, uh, uh, you know, they've had them for a week plus and I don't know, I haven't heard, there's been one positive case. That's so, according to you, if they have a positive friend? To you. 
or okay. and or me yes i did not but, hear about the first one but i think you told me about the first one um, i did I, I didn't hear from them about so um let's just do me a favor please if you do hear from them in case they're not remembering to you know reach out yeah. to the public health nurse give me a shout out just so that i um i'm aware of yeah i'll touch base with them make Thanks. sure that that's going on there yeah. may have been another another so the only other topic for uh the first item here is uh the local vax bus clinic, not bus, the local vax clinic we put on yesterday for the farm workers at uh, Norris Farm. Actually, it was a collaborative effort, mostly from the farm itself and the community health center. They had about 50 farm workers go through in the two and a half hours plus, and it was very good. Everything worked out super. And uh, so the return bus, our return clinic, the 24th so can i ask, and, can I ask yeah. a couple questions just uh um, mm -hmm. you're, you're, I, um I thought that that was the vax bus you're indicating that it wasn't vax bus who who was the um, who ended up well, that was community health but were they the no the, the provider was uh the state's um mobile vax uh, uh, bus and our mobile okay. vaccination clinic provider okay in the area, which happened to be, uh, what was it, PHN, uh, Public Health Network in Springfield. Oh. And, uh, and they were good. Everything, everything, like I said, went pretty well. We had sort of had a driver one run the week before when they didn't show up. So um, <laughs> they were there and every, all of the aspects of getting people logged in, and um, you know, through the, the registration process and into the vaccinations area and then out in the waiting area. And they got a reward too for doing it. So it was, it was very good. So, and- um, um, I got two questions. One was um, how did uh, how'd they do for translators? Everybody spoke Spanish except for the owner of the farm. Uh, Okay. person who was helping coordinate it and she oh. had several of her staff bilingual staff were there there were um, two three probably three at least community health center staff bilingual staff one of which helped uh, in the interpreting section at the vax stations right. and right. and another one um, and the other person who did that was um, one of the Norse bilingual employees. Very, very nice. Very so nice. almost everybody nice. spoke Spanish. Uh, you know, I, I, my little Spanish helped and it was great. I helped a lot of people get, fill out their forms, explaining. We had the forms, the intake forms in Spanish and English. And uh, they're somewhat te tedious, but uh, everybody got through it. And it was pretty good. Uh, uh, my second question was, um, I didn't know there were going to be prizes. I, I would have been there if I'd known there were going to be prizes. <laughs> well, but we didn't know there were going to be, there weren't <laughs> prizes. This was sort of for compensation for Very screwing good. up the previous week. <laughs> Very good. So right. yeah, I got that. I got DPH to uh, consider, you know, making amends there and making the, uh, the agency, the contractor, to, um, you know, give some kind of uh, compensation for the missed clinic a week before. So it was very good. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to try to get as many of the local farms to send their crew, their staff, their workers to the next clinic. There were a handful of people who had not had any vaccinations and uh, they will obviously need their second shots in, in three weeks. And there were seven people who couldn't make the rescheduled time yesterday that will be able to come to the um, the 24th one. So there's really, really nice uh, effort there on, uh, on the part of the farm and uh, the, uh, the community health center was, was good too. They brought down some dividers. So it looked nice, everything functioned smoothly. Which I thought it would a segment of our uh, of our population that um, yeah that missed clearly fifty of them that's great um, mm -hmm. so good job thanks yeah yeah it's good so um, anything else to be said about COVID locally any 
test clinics. I don't, I don't think we have much else going uh, on that score besides what we talked about already. No. So why don't we move on to uh, town ARPA funds committee, Beck? Really, I don't have to ask people on there. She is. I had I had muted myself, and I think it um, oh. it got confused. So okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, a quick question before I um, get into mm -hmm. that: um, Are there any other farms that are interested in the vaccines? Yeah, yeah, there were um, Atlas heads. Uh, at least one or two people there. Um, they shuffled. So the community health center has vans. So they shuffled some people there. I'm not sure which farms they were from, but there weren't, you know, I'm trying to reach out to the town ag commission, sure, which sure. is um, supposedly representative of all the farms in Wheatley and locally. So I, we're gonna try to hit everybody up there and through, through them. But uh, the person at Norse, her name is Rachel Monette, knows a lot of the farm owners and a lot of the farm supervisors so she's oh, been in touch she's been yeah, in touch yeah. mm -hmm. that's great to have uh, yeah. sort of a mm -hmm. someone who yeah can, can yeah there's certain them. farms that are kind of you know hesitant but so yeah. they put it diplomatically about vaccinating themselves and their crew so a little bit tougher not to crack yeah. but there are other options besides this but we thought uh, we'd try the the farm option because there was a enough of a need and they actually Norse actually put in a requirement a vaccination requirement of all the That's workers great. yeah so good but, um so mm -hmm. yeah the um clrf meeting um mm -hmm. you know a little bit of a rocky start from last month or december yeah, this, yeah. this was a a bit better we had a better handle on um, how to structure this. So um, we're, we're at the point where we're gonna come up with a set of criteria for how we can sort of start looking at all of the different requests <clears throat> and think about making sure to get as much outreach to um, entities that we can imagine would be appropriate um, for the money and then um, go through options. So the timing is we're, we're gonna have a, um, we'll probably have monthly meetings. Um, so we'll have another meeting in a month, which I realized today is a little bit of a problem because the scoop um, deadline is end of February. So, cause it would be kind of nice to send out um, a note to everybody letting people know that we exist <laughs> and that we're working. I think on. they should, no, it's not too late. It's perfect actually. No, it's not too late, except that we, um, what I'd love to be able to put into the scoop is a request, you know, for um, input, but we're not there yet. But we can at least announce that what we're working on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Anyway. For sure. So yeah. not not a whole lot more to mention about that. Just that we have, you know, we have a small list from different groups, and um, and as I say, I'm looking forward to um, seeing what kind of list of criteria we. Brian is going to synthesize the meeting mm -hmm. and write up a list. That we came up with it was you know a little bit um still a little <laughs> bit um across the board ish yeah a little bit disorganized but um i think we've uh, there were a few, uh, enough suggestions that i think we can come up with a list of criteria and go from there so I'm sure, I'm sure. yeah who's the chair um we voted um bob holla because he wasn't there so <laughs> So Great. Brian is taking notes and, you know, I, I felt like the meeting went pretty smoothly because a couple of us sort of reined things in and just, you know, got us back on track. So good for you. We, we yeah. did okay. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Bob will be the, chair, the official chair. Did you, uh, did you show him our updated list or let him know we have an um, updated We, we really didn't get into the list of things too oh, okay. much yet. So that'll be next time. Yeah. But yeah, I feel more comfortable that we've got a handle on things and that, um, that yeah, that's, yeah, it'll be fair. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions about that? No, I don't have any. Um, the only thing I was going to suggest, Beck, is um, I'm sure it's probably already on the town website, um, but um, 
you know, it's um yeah, it's whatever fun. we write up for the scoop, you're right, we should put on the website too. You know, we just hmm. we're yeah, go we, we have to sort of like def have a sense ourselves of what we're doing first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, we can put it on the website too for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why don't we just move on to um 60 Swamp Road and you guys who live there can chime in. But Mark, why don't you start and give us a little update on that situation? Okay. So there's been ongoing issues with the water leakage and general disrepair um, at Swamp Road. Um, just for a few examples, um, there's been a lot of moisture in the house. So there's been a lot of uh, mold or mold-like substance build up on the windows um, and in that general area. There are signs of the roof leaking in multiple different locations. Um, there was a lot of electrical problems, outlets not working or plugs not staying in or potentially some, um, some plugs sparking. Um, one of the tenants had to, one of the occupants had to move their refrigerator multiple times because the outlet stopped working. Um, and this has been going on for since early, probably earlier, but um, the first inspection I did on the left side was back in December. Um, and then I did an inspection on the other side back at the end of December, early January. Um, I've been trying to work with the landlord about getting stuff done and st work started as of last week, um, happened to coincide when I was going up my follow-up inspection. Mm -hmm. um, so an electrician has been out to look at the house and repair the, um, the lines. The roof is still an issue and there's some debate of whether it's a moisture issue or the roof's leaking. Um, I, to me, I mean, they both, I had them open up the ceiling so that way we could look up and it looks like that the, um, what is that? The flat board, uh, oh, it, uh, I know T111. No, no, no. Um, the, the flat drywall. Board. Drywall. drywall, plywood. plywood. Oh, thank you. The pl oh, plywood. <laughs> yeah. the plywood looks wet. Um, and you can see water coming from where the plywood hits the beams coming down. Um, there's still, you know, Mrs. Reed, the Lando uh, owner, has you know had multiple people look at it, and there's a little bit of varying opinions. In the meantime, while they try to figure that out, they have I've had them put up a tarp on the roof so that the water is no longer leaking into the right apartment, um, where it's leaking more so than on the left. Um, I'm trying. I'm in the process of. I left a message today with the building commissioner to see if we can get them to go out to take a look to make sure that so they can tell us because I'm not a roofing expert. I know that there's a water issue up there and that needs to be dealt with. I can't definitively say that it's the roof leaking. That's my suspicion. Mm -hmm. But I'm again I'm not the expert. So and I had I have talked with the the home uh, the homeowner today and I let her know that I was reaching out to the building department to try to get somebody out there. The main goal is to make sure that the roof is, there's no more water coming from the ceiling. Um, and then, you know, there's a host of windows that need to be repaired um, as they were leaking cold air in. The doors need weather stripping and that, that's, all that stuff is in progress. Um, one of the, you know, yeah. yeah. So uh, did we give them deadline? Did we give the homeowner deadlines to fix this up? Yeah, and that was last month, and the work didn't start till yeah. last month. Work has has started. I'll give it that much, but again, it didn't start until I was going to do my follow up inspection. Um, there are some other, you know, they she has repaired the sub pump in the basement. The they are running the left side on their own ran dehumidifiers, which then reduce the amount of mold in that apartment. There is a dehumidifier running in the basement. Um, that was a little finicky, but it seems to be, as far as I'm understanding, it's still running. Um, I also suggested that she put one upstairs on the right side, that way it cut down on the moisture, um, which will then cut down on the mold, potential mold, um, and also you know kind of dry it out. Because it was, even being in the apartments, it was very humid. Um, okay. Uh, we we can uh do you, do you guys who live there have any other uh, hold up friend, comment? Friend, friend, friend before before we open it up for comment um yeah. can we have the board members just check in and make sure um we got our questions first yeah sure. just just because that way they can uh sandra and 
um, um, and um, Jen. Jen can address um, all of our all of our concerns. Okay, so, uh, Mark, you were saying um, the building inspectors in, is getting involved. Do do um, are you finding that um, he's difficult to pin down? And would a letter from the Board of Health help? I don't know. So what I've done is I've reached out to them multiple times, and I reached out to them early February. And the only one I really heard, I heard back from the electrical inspector who has since been out. He went out last week to take a look. And there was an electrician, I believe, at the same time as that inspector went. Um, uh, the building inspector has been the hardest part to pin down. Um, I've emailed, uh, what I did was, is I emailed every, all the inspectors at the FERCOG, you know, uh, the building commissioner, the local building inspector, the plumbing inspector, the wiring inspector. I emailed them a copy of my report um, on both sides. You know, I, email, I emailed them twice, one, one for the left side, one for the right side. I copied mm -hmm. them my, the reports on both and I CC'd the uh, occupants so that they, you know, they could hopefully, if it wasn't through me, they could at least you know, talk with the inspector. The inspector could reach out and try to schedule uh, something. Mm -hmm. for, you know. Okay, good. Good. That makes sense. Let us know if that if that's something that if it continues to to drag on, because I can understand your your situation and wanting to to you know to have the person who has to sign off on it in the end, um, you know, addressing exactly what the what they think the problem is. I would hate to have um, you know the 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 property owner um, going after the wrong problem only to find out that, you know, she wasn't addressing the real, the real crux of it. Second question for me is, um, the, the electrical, you mentioned, um, that, um, somebody has come out. Those were very concerning to all of us, you and, 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 and the board also, um, mm -hmm. to hear that there were electrical outlets that weren't just not working, but were actually, you know, shooting sparks Sparking, or, you know, yeah. by reports. Um, you know, very, very concerning is, uh, are you saying now that is the electrical work completed or do you not know for sure? I haven't been out to do a final inspection. I did talk with Jen today. Um, it seems like most of the electrical issues have been addressed. I still want to go out. I'd want to go out to confirm that. that. Um, but, but when I was there um, doing my inspection this past Thursday, when the electrician was there, and they were in the basement. They had the panel completely pulled off and put, they were putting, they were replacing the outlets that were loose. So they went, the, they seemingly went through the entire house. Okay, great. Well, I'm glad uh, that, you know, there was a, a, a good jump made there, but I guess we won't really know until the um, electrical inspector can come and lay eyes on and what work was done. Uh, okay, that's it for me for questions. Back, back to you, any questions? Becky. Thank you. Um, nope. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Um, so we do have two guests here from the actual building we're talking about. And that this building is notorious for uh, not living up to uh, standards as you just heard. So we're gonna be um, doing something about it. We hope we can get uh, as many things fixed as possible for you guys, but do you have anything to to add to this discussion, Sandra or uh, Jen? You, you can unmute, I'll unmute you, but okay. Go ahead. Looks like only Sandra is unmuted. Yeah, Sandra. Yeah, I was just waiting. Oh, for Jen to unmute. Okay, Jen's unmuted now. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, my concern is that she keeps telling me about my bedroom window that it don't need nothing else. Um, I can wait till spring in this and that. My bedroom window, I can literally put my fingers right out my window, mm -hmm. and I've been having a lot of trouble with breathing in this apartment for the past mm -hmm. couple of weeks. I was concerned about the mold issue and the mm -hmm. humidity. And I've talked to her and all she keeps doing is trying to put it off telling her it's too, telling me it's too expensive to do. Like windows and doors should be totally replaced to be honest. I'm not, not, not against Mark, but they're that mm -hmm. bad. Mm -hmm. um, 
so my concern is making sure this gets done properly for one i have enough health issues i don't need any more <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. because it's it's pretty terrible you can, i literally have to plastic off both sides of my bedroom that bedroom window because it's so bad you know my daughter in her area she's got a bedroom a bed next to it it has to be plastic also i only got one side plastic but it still has to be plastic pretty bad almost every room consists of black, the mold looking like a black mold substance in the windows areas um mm -hmm. and now we even have water dripping down the side of our walls in the living room mm -hmm. in the bedrooms um it, it just i'm trying not to be the mean person but at the same time i want my rent is paid and i want it to take me taken care of and it would like some push to help on that yeah anything else well, you think sandy did the owner did um she give you a dehumidifier yet no she has not mm. okay mm -hmm. give you guys a little more description of what the window that jen's talking about um it's, it's just picture of any window in a, you know, in a room the problem is is that how the window was repaired is the top glass panel was replaced with plexiglass, which isn't allowed. Um, and mm. it isn't even sealed or caulked all the way around. You can, again, put your, it's only like sealed on one part, like the bottom, and you can actually put your fingers around the window. Um, the only reason that wind isn't in any cold air isn't coming in is because the tenants have, uh, our occupants have put plastic on the outside to block mm -hmm. the air from in. I informed Mrs. Reed that that was an acceptable solution and that there actually needs to be a glass pane there. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's we give her all kinds of opportunities to do stuff and she doesn't do it. So um, right. I think it's a bad time we started saying, okay, you got till next week or we start issuing fines. Good. Uh, you know, she doesn't listen actually until there's really money on the line. Unfortunately, I actually called a lawyer regarding this, and my lawyer mm -hmm. was waiting for me to take and go give him the money to do this mm -hmm. because it's it's so bad, it's terrible, you know. Yeah, I mean, frankly, to be honest, this uh, this um, landlord is is a slum lord. Yeah, we, we yeah, all know. Exactly. We all know. Yeah, you know, so <laughs> it's our job to go ahead, Mike. Um, I just wanted to um, again. Um, you know, while the electrical uh, was certainly a concern, the very notion that there might still be roof leaks, um, yes. meaning that things are not not getting better, they're actually deteriorating. Um, it got more, worse with the roof. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I'm trying to determine now. Mm -hmm. Mark mentioned that some uh, tarps were placed over the roof. No, uh, she didn't even put a tarp. She put tarp, plastic. plastic. Mm. She put like a painter's tarp. plastic heavy duty you buy them at Walmart. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Okay, so there's something over the roof to try to stop it, but tell me, is that not been successful? You're still seeing water? I still see water, yeah. but it's now in the center of the room right now. It's on the wall ends now. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sad. Well, Mark, uh, you know well, you know what we need to do, I think. And I would just start saying, look, you do it by then, or we're going to find you. That's, does that work, you think? Yeah, no, I think that was the route I was heading, but I wanted to touch base with you guys before I did that. Um, and I, the hardest part for the roof is I can't make, you know, I. Yeah, you know, I know, I know. I know need my a... job, what's wrong with it, but I, I know that tell her that it needs to be fixed. She's getting mixed. The problem is she's getting mixed answers. So much Can so I explain tell... something? This is the yeah. tenant. Um, mm -hmm. She hired, this is Jen, she hired a gentleman named Nikolai last time to fix it when it was supposed to be fixed. He did not pull a permit to even fix it because mm -hmm. he's from Russia and he's mm -hmm. only serviced in Russia for license. He didn't, mm -hmm. He's not licensed here. He's telling her, oh no, nothing's wrong with it. Just need to pull the installation away from the, the end of the house so to have room to breathe. There's nothing wrong with the roof. But other roofers have came and told her, and there's nothing that could get done because she won't allow it because she keeps going, well, Nikolai said so. Well, Nikolai so, is not the final word. I, right. And I tried myself to get a hold of the, all the workers out in um, Greenfield that 
Mark was talking about myself mm-hmm. and nobody's responded to me except I got a call from the plumber mm-hmm. and I got a call from the um, electrical when I inspector. contacted the, the inspector. Yep. He came mm-hmm. out and the plumbing guy came with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But well, didn't really talk much to me, but my phone going back to <laughs> it's good. Going back to Mike's question, and uh, we, you know, roof is clearly a problem. If we can't get the building inspector down in the next week, Mark, let let me know. Well, we will. I'll get on it too. So this is ridiculous that we can't get them down here. So can I, can I ask for? Um, can I ask um, that we request a report from both the electrical um, inspector mm-hmm. and the plumbing inspector? on the results of, of their visit. Uh, if they've came down, we'd, we'd like to know, um, you know, what, what their assessment is. Mm. Does that make sense, Mark? Are, are, is that something that they're... They should be able to provide something, assuming they... Yeah. We're going to take right after just a quick summary of what they observe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, that's... That's a small point. And the same with the building inspector, if, if and when we get them down here. If time. and when. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a when question. This is this is ridiculous. They, you know, this they know know what's going on in that building. At least I will have heard from the electrical inspectors and probably the plumbing inspector. So I, it's just, you know, there's no excuse. Maybe somebody's out sick for a little bit, but there's got to be somebody back by now okay. in that department. I'm, you know, Mark. Let's work on it. If there's any, uh, you know, I'll make some phone calls if you want, just to reinforce this. But we need it to happen. This is this is so typical for this this landlord and building owner. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. So All right. gotcha. okay, great. Um, so we'll get back to you. You'll see some something happening, Sandra and Jen. So stay tuned, but keep us posted or keep Mark posted in particular. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there no updates on uh, the uh, grounds. White, white Birch? Because <laughs> I don't no, think there was a basement issue at White, white Birch, Mike. I yeah, saw that in a minute. Yeah, that's still pending. They need to fix the basement um, as... Oh. And I don't know how they're going to fix that. I mean, there's been some debate of whether how to get that fixed. Um, she knows what she needs to do. Just getting it done is again um, a challenge. You know, a challenge. Um, what is it? That needs the problem to is, is, so it's a you know, if you pick the basement's kind of U-shaped, and the front mm-hmm. end, or there's a door, and the end facing um, the field and the septic system. Anyways, it's just a wood door there, and so dirt just keeps. With rain off, dirt just keeps flowing in, and so Ooh. there's water issues in the basement. There's dirt issues in the basement. They really need to redo that ramp or mm-hmm. seal it off, seal it off completely, mm-hmm. um, like any other regular basement, because you're just getting stuff flowing in. So again, it's not weather tight, you know, mm-hmm. etc. Yeah. And you know, not only does the campground regulations apply to that, the housing regulations apply to that because there's an apartment in that building. Oh, right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that another building inspector issue or is that something we handle? The, R code, the problem is uh, the R code refers to the building department a lot and I don't know what the, mm. I can tell you that it's not weather tight. I don't know how they make mm. it weather tight because again, I think that would fall more under the building department's determination mm-hmm. versus mm-hmm. in theory, she should be able to hire a licensed contractor that knows the licensed contractor should know what they're doing and then be able to fix the issues. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So that would require a permit, of course. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All this work should require a permit. Um, yeah. Even when the roof was originally repaired. Um, mm-hmm. so I don't Sandra. think one of us pulled, but anyway. Okay. Uh, Sandra, do you have something to say on this topic or what? Sandra uh, helps run the campground. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead, Sandra. You probably need to unmute her, I'm guessing. I, I, I. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just, Mark, just yesterday, um, they had to go there and the pipes were frozen downstairs. 
at the campground okay thank you because of the um the door wasn't insulated you know the the door down there mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, that, yeah. So again, weather tight, that's why you get pipes freezing is because there's not a, you know, it's not an enclosed space. It's just a wood panel door that I th I'm guessing is propped open a little bit because of the, the amount of dirt that flows down that slope. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Well, we'll work on that. You can see that's another, another issue, but Beck. Oh, the, I mainly did that because I needed to be able to unmute and I couldn't do it on my own. Um, but uh -huh. okay. I, um, I have this other meeting I have to go to. Um, okay. We have much else we have to do. Well, we still, we no. still have a quorum, Beck, so we, 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 we can finish up and, and yeah, quorum. Yeah, it's just um, a couple of small One is just a, a quick uh, review of our uh, recommendations. I don't think we're changing any of those. Oh, for um, this for, next oh, item sorry. for town yeah. use of town buildings and okay. uh, town hall in particular. I would advocate for not making those changes at this. I point. agree completely. Yep. Totally okay. Fourth so, wave. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. Go no, on. we're not there yet. All right. Okay. Back. Well. Okay, guys. Keep, keep in touch. Okay. okay. Bye. Take, take care. Bye bye. Care. Yeah. Um. So with that, we're down to the town report. Um. From the board of health. Mark, you're gonna throw something together, right? Work on that. We can yeah, uh, do that too. I'm, yeah, I'm just a little back yeah. up because of housing issues that came up today. Yeah, no, 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 no. Don't, this is a low, low, low priority. Okay. In fact, we get to it when we get to it typically. <laughs> um, yeah. What else do we have on there? So we, we had- Mike on the Laurel Hill, or Laurel yeah. Mountain Road. Yeah, oh, that, do you wanna, yeah. Say it quickly. I mean, okay. we both worked on it today, but go ahead. Yeah. So um, we got a call from the fire department letting us know that they shut off the gas co uh, oil company shut off the oil or the furnace, etc. The heat to 29 Laurel Mountain Road. Um, I went out to see what was going on. There, the gentleman, the occupant there, um, is a tenant. The homeowner has passed away. So I bet currently he does have a pellet stove that he can use as heat and he has a couple other space heaters that he can use. Mm -hmm. So he's not in, it's not a great situation, but he's, it's at least a livable situation. At least Is it wait, wait. hot water? He doesn't have any hot water. So but he does have family in the area where he can use the shower if needed. Okay. Um, so I've spent most of my day jumping through hoops, trying to get a hold of somebody that would, be in charge of the property um, with little to no luck. Um, I've talked to multiple different loan companies mm -hmm. uh, that they have no, usually the companies have some type of department that deals with maintenance and all that kind of stuff. However, mm -hmm. um, the two banks that I have talked to, they don't have any direct lines to those departments. Mm -hmm. They can't transfer to me those departments. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, what the, the uh, failure service, which is the one that looks like owns the lien on the property, at least according to the mass land records. The first person I talked to wouldn't even direct me anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. Basically said, I just kept saying, I can't help you. They needed the loan number and all that kind of stuff, which I don't have. Yeah. Um, this day I called back and talked with a different person. They told they gave me an email address to email, which I have done. Um, I reached out to the other bank which was listed on the paperwork that the occupant had. Um, and they passed that my information along to their department, but they don't have any direct <laughs> contact for that. I called the state um, loan board to see if they have any direction. Um, and tomorrow I'm going to follow up with, or try to follow up with the state to see, maybe even talk with the AG's office having to do with you know, properties like this are, are an issue across the state where there's mm. loans, that their mm. loans get bounced around. And often the problem is, is by the time, you know, because the, you know, government's a process, by the time we get to any kind of resolution, then it'll bounce to another company. And then you have to start the process all over again. Um, Can I offer, um, you know, Fran, you, you might know better than I, is this a Cheryl Sabaro um, kind of thing? Uh, 
He's the one who gave us that talk mm -hmm. on housing court back back in the day. Yeah, maybe. Um, but this this case is a little more complicated. Uh, it's quite complicated. I, I, yeah. yeah, initially I did groundwork with it. Spent forty minutes on the phone to the. It's an LLC to the services. It's a mortgage loan servicer, i.e., collection agency, glorified. And I I finally got through to somebody. I told and I gave the number to Janet Mark. Um, yeah. Did you get that? Yeah, I remember I got, I called, just give me the the three one two number that you had given me. Just goes yeah. right back to your general one eight hundred number. Oh, okay. Well, there's a name attached to that, and there's there's a account department or whatever I, I whatever it was. Yeah, the, I don't you know I don't hold up much hope that they're going to do anything. Well, so. that's why I, let me just suggest again um, that um, you know I don't think we want to put Mark in in the position of needing to be the detective here. No, he mm -hmm. doesn't have you know the ability to get this, loan numbers all that. This is a legal matter, and I think mm -hmm. Sabaro. Uh, or her office um, wow. should be able to give us some some direction um, because this is yeah. you know, about mm -hmm. who who currently with a deceased um, uh, uh, title holder um, you know where 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 does it go from there and to you know mm -hmm. Mark could be chasing it and you and we all could be chasing our tail forever trying to get to the bottom. Well, yeah, we heard that it's going to be in foreclosure soon. So that at that point it reverts to a real bank and then they the the owners and they would be responsible but you know who knows how long it's that possible. takes so yeah maybe we can well mark knows uh all right Shara, uh, Cheryl yeah. I'll, okay. I'll shoot her an email but i've dealt with this in other towns and this is just the work unfortunately this is just the process that it is yeah um, it's, wow it sucks. it's um, just that if something happens in the house because right. there's no you right. know right. so one of the things that the code allows is i think and I have to do a little more research, and I don't know what the town's funding is. Is the town can do the repair and then put a lien against the property? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With what money? Yeah, <laughs> we could. That, yeah, you know, that, that's a whole other yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I know that's an. I know that that's an option, but uh, yeah. So right now he's surviving there, and he can uh, assume it, assuming he can get water and uh, hot water. At, bath somewhere else um because he's been there for quite a while actually from what yeah, i understand been there for 15 years he's currently dealing with the tail end of his chemo treatments because he had um, cancer oh, I mean, that too Oof. Yeah. <laughs> a mess he was, well, sure he was very housing sure yeah. when i was there but he was happy that somebody showed up and was able to talk to him mm -hmm. uh, good thanks for so, doing that mm -hmm. my dealt with in the next couple of days because heating is a huge issue um yeah and mark so generally the um the condition of the rest of the place this is not you know is something that's looking at being condemned it's not that far along it's just throws. well we could i mean just for on the no heat or the no hot water we could condemn it yeah yeah that's right i mean it's condemnable right now but what do you <laughs> what's the remedy they we need before mm -hmm. somewhere and and he would uh and presumably be re the property owner would be required to pay the um the cost the housing yeah. relocated housing costs but <laughs> that's oh, yeah. convoluted yeah well mark keep working on let keep me posted and you know i'm happy to help with the calls or ferret out some information if you know how to reach uh cheryl with uh MAHP. Yeah. So good. Okay. Um, anything else on that topic? No. Okay. No. So there are a couple of Foothills Health District items. Mostly we were talking about buying masks and stuff like that, but I don't think that's on the table anymore. Um, any, any hiring, uh, any health inspector inquiries? We did. The only inquiry we got was. Um, uh, a retired doctor in town, but he thought it, it was just a misunderstanding and he thought it was for a board of health position versus an actual. <laughs> Which town? <laughs> uh, Williamsburg. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, God. So this is not, not a good scenario. 
it's a quasi uh, board of health position. I mean, we can, we can call it <laughs> yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> well, is he willing to learn? How old is he? Like 79? <laughs> yeah. well, anyway, well, you want, yeah, I don't think he's interested in doing that. No, I don't think so either. Well, all right. I, I don't have anything else. No, I'm good. You guys, you, you're good, Mark? Yeah. Chris, did you have any questions about anything? You're good? Okay. See you guys next time. We'll do it in a month. March right. 8th. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.